Welcome to this video. In the previous video of the series, we created the JavaScript logic to make it possible to open and close a modal on click. So if we click onto this image right here, this modal and this backdrop open. And if we click anywhere onto this backdrop, both the modal and the backdrop are closing. That's nice and we achieved this by using the query selector right here and we selected the trip image class, a class both the left and the right image share right here. But the problem is that with this method we are not able to open the modal whenever we click onto this second image. The reason for that is that by using the query selector method we are only able to select the first model that has a specific class in our case. So this means the query selector is probably not the perfect approach for our goal. Let's see how we can change that and improve that solution in this video. Now as I said, the problem is that with our current query selector, we can only select the first image right here. So we actually need a method, well, that allows us to select both images. For that, we can go back to our code and now add the all keyword after our query selector right here. With all, we will now no longer be able to select only the first image of a specific class in our cage and then it's done. We cannot select any additional element. With this method, as the name says, we can select all the elements of a specific selector, in our case the trip image class, on our website. So if we go back to the page and reload it, we can now see that we don't have a single element selected, but we get such a node list. If we open that node list right here, you can see that we have the first image selected right here, and we also selected the second image right there. Also have a look at these numbers right here. Each image has its own index number inside this node list. The first image has the index number zero, so item one is zero from a node list perspective. And then we have the second image which has the index number one. This would continue, the third image would have the index number two and so on. But with that we are now able to select both images. The question now is can we also access these images because now we have these two images with the different index numbers but we might want to access a specific image, the first or the second one. We can do that in JavaScript by simply adding the image as f variable, so this variable up here. Now adding the curly braces like this and now select the image or access the image based on this index number right here. This means if I would now add the zero right here like that and now console log this entire code right here and don't forget the bracket. And if I now reload the page, you can see that we now have the same behavior we had before. We selected this first image but now we selected it inside this node list. This means if I now change the zero right here to one like that and reload the page, you can see that now the second image is selected and therefore we have access to the second image now. So that's pretty cool already. We are now able to select both images but we cannot work with that as of now. Because actually what we now want to achieve is, once we click onto this or that image, our modal should open once again. To do this, we have to react to a specific event again, a click event. Now in the last video I used the on click method right here. In this video I want to use an alternative. I want to use an event listener. How does this work? Well, first I will get rid of the console log now like this and like that. And now we have our image that we want to select. Then I will add a dot and now write add event listener like that. To make such an event listener work, we have to specify an event and we have to specify, well, what should happen once this event occurs. 
for that, we'll open the brackets and first specify our event, which is a click event at the moment, like that. If you're not sure about the events we can add to such an event listener, make sure to have a look at the video description where you can find the link to the MDN, which dives deeper into that. But in this video, we will only use the click event. After specifying this event, we also have to specify what should happen now. And well, what should happen is actually already defined by us because we want to open the modal whenever we click onto this image right here. So let's simply add open modal right here. No brackets because we don't want to execute the function immediately. And if we now delete our old code right here, we don't need that anymore like this and now go back to our website and reload it. You can see that if I click onto it, now the modal and the backdrop is opening. If I click onto the first image, nothing is happening though, because we only specified or selected the image with the index number in the node list one. So as we can see right here, this image right here with that number. If we would now simply take the code right here and maybe copy it up there and now change the one to a zero like that and go back and reload the page. Then this would work for the left image right here and also for the right image. So with that, we made our modal work for both images and that actually is quite fine. But it's only quite fine because if we look at the code again, we can see that we basically copy and pasted the same code two times. The only difference is the number right here, which allows us to select the item in the node list. And if we would have more than two images, we would have to copy and paste the same code again and again. And I don't think that's what we want to achieve. Wouldn't it be better if we could do this differently? Because why don't we just copy that one time right here and then not set the fixed number into our brackets, but a variable. For example, something like i, like that, like this one, i. So this is basically all the code that we should need. And this would allow us to get rid of this code right there, because now we only need a structure that allows us to change the value for i. So basically it should be zero and one equal to the index number in our node list right here. And then this code should be executed. Now repeating the same code again and again and changing a variable is something a loop is perfect for. A loop is a so-called control structure and in JavaScript we have different loops, for example a while loop and a for loop. And for this purpose the for loop is the one to choose. Now how does such a for loop work then? Well the for loop starts Big surprise now with the for keyword. Then we need brackets right here. Inside these brackets, we have to specify some conditions for this loop. I will come back to that in a few seconds. And then we need our curly braces right here. So basically our block. And then we could add this block right here because that's exactly what should happen for each iteration of this loop. The problem now is that we didn't specify any conditions, so we didn't define how this loop should work. And because of that, we only have i right here. So the first thing we have to define in our for loop is the starting condition, the starting point that we have. For that, we will use the same variable we have right here, so i. And in the beginning, i should be equal to zero. What does this mean? Well, we would have zero in here and therefore select the first item in our node list. And then this event listener would become active and see if we have a click event. And if that's the case, the open modal function would be executed. So with that starting condition being specified, we also have to specify an exiting condition. This is also related to i of course. So we will continue our loop until i is smaller, well, smaller than what? The image SF length, like that. Now, what does this mean now? Well, the image SF length right here is equal to two. We can see this right here in our node list. But I should only have values of zero, the starting value. So basically the value that lets us select 
the or that selects the first image or one because one would select the second image. And that's why this node list is important to keep in mind. So this well behavior that the first item has the index number zero, the second has the index number one and so on. But with that structure, we make sure that i can only have values of 0 and 1. And once i is equal to 1, the loop will no longer be continued. The only problem now is that our loop doesn't change the number. So it always stays at 0 because we didn't specify that it should increase the value of our variable after each iteration. This is the last thing we have to specify in our for loop. And for that, we can use the increment operator here in JavaScript, which simply works like that, i++. This simply says that whenever we finished our loop, so one iteration of our loop, the variable, so i right here, will be increased by one integer. So after the first loop, this will change to one. So this is basically all the code we need right now. So we start with i equal to zero, Therefore, we select the first item in our node list. We check if we click onto this item. And if we do that, the open modal function, so this function right here, will be executed. After that, the variable i will be increased or will increase by one integer. So i will then be equal to one. The loop will check if i is still smaller than the image sf variable length. So our two right here. This is the case. So the loop will run once again, this time with i being equal to one right here. Therefore, this event listener will become active and see if we click on to the second image. So this one right here. And if that's the case, the open modal function will be executed. After that, this increment operator will become active again and increase the value for our i variable to two now. And then our for loop will check if i is still smaller than our image sf length right here. And as this is equal to two, it will stop the loop right there because this condition is no longer fulfilled. So let me now get rid maybe of this code we don't need anymore. And if we now save that, go back to our page and reload it, we should see that if we click onto this image, the modal and the backdrop is opening. And if we click onto the second image, this is also working perfectly. And that's it actually. That's the entire code we need right here to be able to open and close this modal depending on the image we are selecting. What we could do as a last step to make this a bit more consistent, we could also add the event listener right here to our backdrop to close the modal. For that, we will get rid of that code right here. Now type add event listener, open the bracket, add the click event as we did it before, and now add the close modal function right here. So this one. With that, if we go back and try it out one last time, we can open the modal, close the modal, open the modal, and close the modal. And this is it actually. This was the second approach, how to make such a modal visible and invisible. I hope you liked this video. And in the next video of this Beginner's Guide JavaScript series, we'll work on the contact page right here. Because this page is empty, that's not the biggest issue. But I also want to add some nice JavaScript features in this form we will create right there. Which features these are and how this works, let's find that out in the next video.